testing for COVID is a temporary thing. This is going to be all over in six months, and then there'll be uh, H1N1 coming in the fall. You know, so when that happens, we'll be talking about this again. But chronic illness is a big deal. Two-thirds of our population is obese. That was not always the case. Is that a matter of national security? And the answer is, you betcha. What do you do if two-thirds of your high school kids are too fat to go in the Army in the case we go to war? That's a real problem, don't you think? If two-thirds of the kids are, are, are just disqualified medically, this is a big deal. But there are lots of jobs where you have to be physically qualified, you know, like being a police officer, assuming that we still have police officers willing to do that job after the, the recent issues. So what are, we, what are we looking at? Why is all this happening? And what can you do to prevent it? And even more interestingly, what are you doing to cause it? Because we are a product of what we do. We are a product of what we eat. So the old expression, you are what you eat, is exactly accurate. Okay, so if you want to eat in a healthy manner, you're going to do well. If you're going to eat poorly, you're going to end up with poor health. Sadly, a lot of folks think they're eating in a healthy manner, and, and, and they're actually making themselves sicker. And that's what Stages of Life is all about, is trying to fine-tune people's lives so that you make the appropriate adjustments to turn something that's going south into something that might be going west because we can't go north after all that's that would be you know a problem these days that, that somebody will criticize me for, for uh, that dichotomy but the upshot of it is is that you are doing some things wrong that are causing you and your trajectory to go off course so what does this mean to you what does it mean to me I liken it to throwing a football or, or an, you know, if an archery, you know, you've got a bow and arrow and the goal is to make it the greatest distance with that arrow or the greatest distance with that football or baseball. The largest distance is sometimes called longevity. And if you aim too high, the arrow goes up, very impressive, and comes down short. If you aim with a low trajectory, your ED medication therapy, visit makerx.com. That's M A R X. Yeah. And they're actually good people. You guys there? Chris? Chris, you there? If you're paying too much for ED pills, call them at 407 Okay, I have uh, no one on the join me, so I can't tell who's waiting. You guys there? Earth to DBO. Hello? Hello? We're connected. You sure? Well, well then no. we have to watch our language then, at the very least. We dropped out for a second. Um, everything dropped out. They dropped out. I, we connected. I, I mean, we're connected. Anyone there? Chris? I had a feeling with this we were going to have an issue. Yeah, but they're having technical problems regardless. Whatever the case may be, whoever is on the phone had it on speaker, and I can hear everything like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, which I means he was answering phone calls. Anyway, hi guys, it's Melissa. Um, we're just hanging. This is out. low tech, is what they call this. <laughs> no, I'm not. Hey, what's going on? Have you ever been told to hang in there as your portfolio is dropping or even crashing? This is Brian Kilmeade. No one in retirement or close to retirement wants to. Okay, check your check your microphone because you sound like you're inside of a box. Or on speakerphone. Speakerphone. Unfortunately, too many of us heard that during the last market crash. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. We're having fun. All right. Today. Well, whoever, no. whomever, just make sure because there, there's a problem there. So, hi everybody. Yeah, Facebook is good now. Well, thanks. We're back. Appreciate. It. All right. Bye bye. He was echoey. Echoey. Well, I, I don't know why that would be. Shouldn't have been echoey. Anyway, he's back. So what's the deal? Hmm? Can I call Chris now? No, I just took care of it. Okay. Okay. Well then, uh, hi Facebook. How are you? I, I thought so. I think I took care of it. Well, we can hear them now. Couldn't hear them before. All of a sudden, they just you know, dropped away. Yeah, one of the one of the one of the fun things about radio like this, especially when you're in in the time of COVID. This mm. is like the, the time of the plague. Oh my God! Everything goes back, okay, to to the day when this could this could have been a crystal radio set. You know what I mean? One of these little things you bought for four dollars at Radio Shack. Um, Thank you, know, you. So what disconnected us? Okay, there was a lightning. 
a, a bolt out there, something Spectrum something crap. between here and Oshkosh. Mm-hmm. You know, it, there's a, and this is the lightning capital of the world. If you're not in Florida, you may not realize this, yeah. but it is the lightning capital of the world and the tornado capital of the world. They're hitting pretty hard out there, too. Yeah, the tornadoes are, are, are not the same type of tornadoes they get in the Midwest. Those are tornadoes. We have tornadoes. Okay, they're little things, little F1s. Okay, and I had one go Down through. My, yeah, we had one go through my backyard. Okay, and so Thank you. took up took off one of my loripedalum trees in my orchid barn, and then passed between the house and the and the, and the garage. Loripedalum trees in your orchid barn. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but I am a manly man after no, all. That sounded pretty fancy. All right, stand yeah. by. <laughs> Oh boy. Yep. Just lost a half. I just lost sure a did. bunch of my listeners oh. on that one. Klein's a Laura Petal guy. To the new home of AM 580. I know you can hear the ads. I have it in the background. At least he's not playing Burning Down the House. Hey, welcome back to Stages of Life here on WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580 Orlando's News and Talk. We are live on this Sunday. Looking for you to join us at 844-580-WDBO, 844-580-WDBO. And uh, Doc, we've got some calls on the line, but we do have to finish up what you were talking about there because you dropped off with just the biggest cliffhanger because you were getting ready to tell us how people can get a hold of you to get some of these tests. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, frankly, I didn't know where we, we went off because when I go rambling, <laughs> man, I'm on a tear. <laughs> so in any event, with regards to the testing, and then I'm going to get into, into chronic illness, tell you what we're about. Okay, but the COVID hotline is 407-636-3945. That's 407-636-3945. And what we do there is we figure out what test you're going to need, what the level of urgency is, your location, and then we set you up with one of our three locations. And it's all done. You go online, okay, you fill out the, the appropriate forms. And this is the key to this business, because if we can reach you by email or by telephone, you get the results back fairly quickly. That is the key to this business. So what we found early on, because we're doing thousands of tests per day, Okay, one lab, you know, one doctor, right? One lab, we're doing thousands of these suckers per day. That's thousands of patients. And some patients are getting one test done, two tests done, or three tests done. We're getting it all done. We promise 48 hours, but it, it often is a whole lot faster depending upon the, the individual need and where they're located. If you're in the villages, it's going to take us longer because the, the driving distance is a little longer. So we're able to do your, pace, your PCR that's gold standard. We're able to do... Uh, between 400 and 900 of these things per hour. The thing that we don't really advertise is that our lim- our limit of detection is 35 times better than what we found the Mayo Clinic to be. Okay, which means we have a better machine, faster machine, better throughput, and we charge less. Other than that, I'd say that we probably are competitive. With regards to the antigen, we have uh, several of these machines, so they're running in parallel. That tells you whether or not you're shedding the virus instead of just the, the, the viral particles. And we have two different platforms for antibodies. So depending upon the need of the individual, what the clinical presentation is, what the demand is, we can do whatever we need to do. So it's not a matter of standing in line for five hours, getting somebody to shove something in your nose, not necessarily even knowing what they're doing, and then waiting as long as two, uh, two weeks to get your results back. Oh, they promise it in five days, but we know what that means. The check is in the mail. So that's what we're doing right now. But what I'd like to talk about is chronic illness, chronic disease, and what you can do to prevent it. Because that's what Stages of Life is all about. So we've changed signals. We're on the same station, same call, but different, really a different location. So I'm I'm expecting that we're going to get people listening in that haven't listened before. So you're not going to know who I am. And that's fine. I don't even necessarily know who I am half the time. So (laughs) Stages of Life. Stages of Life is is a general medical practice located in Longwood, Florida, which is just north of Orlando. And so we do diagnostic medicine, we do uh, holistic health, if you want to call it that, nutritional medicine. I do hormone replacement therapy. I've got five board certifications. So in different days, I decide what I want to do. You know, so there's an identity crisis here. You know, I do pretty much what I care to do, on, on, you know, for that individual. What happens is we end up with a very wide breadth of services. So we do everything from diagnostic ultrasound, Doppler ultrasound, cardiac ultrasound, all the way through um, full laboratory uh, analysis right there on location. 
and you're going to think, what possible value does it does it uh, do to uh, to have a laboratory? And the answer is very simple. If you go to your doctor's office, they may be there may be boxes on their front door. I want you to look for them, and they say LabCorp or Quest. They may say uh, Millennia. They may say whatever, but there are these metal boxes outside their doors. And what these are, these are where they leave the samples. Okay, now in Florida, okay, it can get to 140 degrees inside those metal boxes. And if you think for a minute that the blood is going to remain unchanged, sitting out there for as long as it takes, it may be out there six or seven hours until they get picked up, and then they get driven to Tampa, it is going to be a problem. So what do we do? We do the laboratories right in the office. If you choose to do it, if you want to go to the other places, it doesn't matter. You know, we, we work with work with whomever. It doesn't make that much difference. But the value of your laboratory, the data is tremendously different. So one of the things that we found early on was that by doing the labs in the office, we were finding that very, very few people were actually coming in with elevated liver enzymes. Now, unless you have this issue, you're going to wonder what the heck I'm talking about. The liver enzymes are something that you see when you suspect hepatitis. So about two-thirds of the people I was sending out, we'd end up having our own hepatitis panels on them because their LFTs were elevated. Hmm. And what does this mean? It means that the, the blood cooked inside these boxes, it released the enzyme, so you ended up with spurious results. So I want you to imagine for a second that you're going to take a beer or a, a glass of wine or even a glass of milk and put it in a little container and mail it to your aunt for, for you know that's that's 20 you know 24 to 48 hours away and then drink it on the other end and see if it tastes right okay that's pretty much what you're doing with the blood chemistries so this you know, so the, the value of the, the data really degrades so you know you just do what you got to do you pay you get what you pay for in life and that's what it's about so what is stages of life so stages of life is a diagnostic uh, entity we take the ones the patients that people um, they don't get the answers that they're looking for. They don't get answers at all. Well, I don't know what's wrong with you. You know, uh, you have fibromyalgia or you have this, that, or the other. Diseases with no known causes. We bring people in and figure it out. Treatable causes of dementia. Do you really necessarily want to go to a nursing home if you don't have to? What happened, what happened to grandma? Why did all of a sudden her mental status change? We've got to start looking for a nursing home and you find out she has a chronic urinary tract infection. If you don't know what you're looking for, if you don't look for treatable causes, you'll never find them. Or somebody with adrenal failure. This happened to my mom. Adrenal failure. So she ended up with, with very, very low cortisol and she became demented as a result of it. When she took her Cortef, which cost about $30 a month, Boom. She was back to doing her, her, her crossword puzzles in pen. So looking for treatable causes of illness is really what it's about. But my favorite thing, the thing that I like the best, the thing I live for, is figuring out how to prevent illness. How do you prevent thyroid disease? How do you prevent diabetes? How do you prevent hypertension? How do you prevent obesity? How do you prevent depression? And the answer is really actually in all cases is is the same you find the piece that causes it and you replace it so let's say to take depression what's the number one presentate presenting symptom of hypothyroidism the answer is depression how do you make somebody depressed that that's otherwise non-depressed you keep them from sleeping so insomnia can cause depression how do you cause people to become constipated how do you cause people to become obese diabetes is very, very frequently caused by certain mineral deficiencies. So you replace the minerals and the, and the blood sugars come down. So I have patients coming in that are tickled when their A1C, their hemoglobin A1C is over 7. It, we got it all the way down to 6.5. I like getting it down to the low fives. And can you do it? And the answer is, of course you can do it. You figure out the pieces that are missing and then replace them. And some of them are very, very easy to do. Some require a little bit of work. None of them are expensive. Okay. But this is something that you have to do. And then once you figure it out, you, stay, you just stay a steady course and then you do well with it. So if you want to make somebody diabetic, deplete their diet of chromium and or vanadium and they will become diabetic. If you replace the chromium, the weight drops off a little bit, the blood sugar drops a little bit, but it doesn't go anywhere until you replace the vanadium with it. Inositol, NAC, my vitamin D, which is not a vitamin. My regular listeners have heard me ramble on about that for years. So there are many, many causes for these, uh, these chronic illnesses, and there's a tremendous amount of overlap. What difference does it make? Okay, well, you may be thinking, you know, with, well, with COVID, 
great example for not having chronic illnesses. If you have your choice to have one or not have one, COVID is a really good argument why you don't want to have chronic illness. So what chronic illnesses, might you ask, put you at risk for developing COVID? And everybody has opinions. They also have elbows and they have other parts of the anatomy of equal value. So what is it that causes people to become more susceptible to COVID? And the answer is something called ACE receptors. That's, that's a, a angiotensin converting enzyme receptor. These things are present in the bloodstream. When they're there in, and they're dysfunctional, you develop hypertension. When they're in the lungs, you can develop pulmonary hypertension. But they're in, present in huge quantities in the gut the GI tract. So what happens is, is that when the virus is introduced into your diet, into what you eat, you can develop COVID that way. It's probably the way that it's done in nature most frequently. So what can you take to make this happen more frequently? And the answer is simple, antacids. So if you've got reflux esophagitis and you're taking PPIs or H2 blockers, and you'll know them as things like omeprazole, tagamet, Zantac, and whatnot, that takes away the stomach acid, that's what protects you from what you eat. So individuals that are obese, far more likely to take antacids, H2s or PPIs. People that have uh, diabetes, far more likely to take it. People that have autonomic dysreflexia from X, Y, or Z, doesn't even matter. These people are far more likely to get COVID. Why is it that obese people, diabetics, it's exactly the same reason. So you really want to not develop these problems. That's really simple. Now, it's not so easy to turn around in the middle of a pandemic. No question about it. But who's at risk? Those are the people. So why is it that all these people in nursing homes got so sick and, and, and died? Because almost every one of those people is taking Prilosec. Almost every one of them is taking one of those antacids. Because after all, when you're bedridden, you end up with reflux. And nobody wants to hear grandma complain about upset stomach. So they all get, you know, 20 cents worth of Prilosec and it shortens their life by two or three or four years. So that's what we're talking about here. So how do you fix this? And the answer is very simple. You don't look for poisons to fix problems. Okay, so that, that when you poison the, the uh, proton pump inhibitor system, you end up with problems. When you poison the H2 block, the receptors, you have problems. So there is a time and a place for prescription medication. But you need to understand that every sword, okay, has two edges to it. Okay, you, you know, it's just the way that it goes. So, you know, you, you get cut one way, you get cut the other way. So understand that even the most innocuous looking of medications has at least 10 side effects for every one salutary effect. That is life in the fast lane. So, well, what possible damage can you do with antacids? You got all day? Okay, my favorite is B12 deficiency. So we have people that come in with, with neuropathy. I have neuropathy. My feet hurt. My this, my that. And you find out they've been taking uh, PPIs for some other irrelevant condition and they have a B12 deficiency. You know, and then it's downhill from there because when you end up with a B12 deficiency, you end up with, with blood dyscrasias and you end up with myopathies and cardiomyopathies. What does this mean? My muscles don't work and my heart stops. So these can be problems for you. And it can be as easy to fix as not taking the darn Prilosec. So one of my favorite news stories, okay, was when they pulled some of these things off the market because of the, the uh, Chinese garbage that we were given as generics had a carcinogen in it. Okay, so they pulled it off. They pulled the stuff off the shelves for a few months. Okay, I don't think people ever got healthier than during that two or three months that they pulled the Prilosec off the market. So at stages of life, what do we do? First thing we do is we look at the individual as an individual. What is wrong with you? What, what's bothering you? What's not bothering you? You want to feel better? How are you sleeping? How are you pooping? How is your sex life? How is life treating you? What's your outlook? And then we go ahead and we do our blood work. We figure out what you're missing, what's out of balance, and we start to restore balance. That's all about balance. And that's what we do. All right, good stuff there, Doc. 844-580-WDBO. Some great information from Doc for our new listeners who may be joining us this week. 844-580-WDBO. Go ahead, give us a call now. Phone lines are open. We've got Steve, we've got John, we need both of you, and we've got plenty of more lines open. 844 844- 580 WDEO. You are listening to Stages of Life on 1037 FM and AM. Okay, what's all going on? What are we talking about? We're here on the Facebook now. Okay, 
So, we got some questions. Uh, let's see. What do we got there? What's the point of getting tested for coronavirus when there's no vaccine or cure yet? Well, actually, that's a brilliant question because you don't want to be giving it to anybody else if you have it. So if you're if you're selfish about it, it really doesn't make any difference. Okay, and that's the real problem. So when the youngsters say, well, we call these things boomer removers, that really is kind of a bad scene. So do you want to <laughs> know that you've that? got it? Oh, I picked that one up uh, yesterday. Oh, I'm a boomer. I'm not really crazy about that. T- I'm not, and, oh, and by the way, I will outlive you. Okay. So how does, how does this work? You need to know. The second thing is um, it's helpful to know whether or not you're at risk. So if you've already had it, the antibodies are a very useful thing to know. Because if you've had it in the past, the likelihood of you picking it up going to the grocery store diminishes tremendously. So knowing whether you have it or what, knowing whether you're infectious or knowing whether or not you're uh, immune or you have some relative immunity is wickedly important because ignor- ignorance is not bliss. It's like, gee, why do I care if I have angina? Well, it's really nice to know if, the, if you have a heart issue before it stops. Yeah, it's, that's kind of a good idea. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Tanya's on the line. She says, how you test for sur- Syria? Uh, I can't. Sorry. I can't. Can you read that? No, I can't even see it. So let's see. Trying to make it bigger, but I can't. Uh, where are we? How do you test for psoriatic 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 arthritis? arthritis. I have achy joints. Actually, no, you spelled that, whoever spelled that properly, (laughs) P-S-O-R. Tiny uh, achy joints, tiny area rash, supplements can help. All A&A and rheumatoid tests are negative. Psoriatic arthritis is actually a fairly unusual cause of arthritis. And typically when people do, they'll end up with sacroiliac arthritis as a presenting complaint. And what does that mean? It means low back pain. So you can have psoriasis and you can have arthritis, but that doesn't make it psoriatic arthritis. The treatment with psoriatic arthritis is usually use a little bit stronger type of anti-inflammatory. And so, you know, what does it mean? It means you need to know what's going on. But at the very least, okay, if you think that's a possibility, you need to make sure that you don't have other forms of uh, autoimmune diseases going on, in particular autoimmune thyroid disease and suppression of the adrenal glands. Because if you do, these are two extraordinarily easy um, approaches to fixing this, controlling it is a better way to look at it. Mm. And again, ignorance is not is not bliss on this one. So psoriatic arthritis, if it's not sacroiliac, then it's it's unlikely that it's truly psoriatic arthritis. But which, what, what do we have up there also? Okay, she also said, uh, with the second wave, do we take colostrum every day? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I, I assume that's a gal. Yeah, it is. It's okay, yeah. Again. yeah, well, what happens is, is that two-thirds of my, my patients are women. They tend to listen better than the guys do. Yeah. And I don't exactly understand this. Yeah, the answer is affirmative. You want to take two colostrum at bedtime to start. Should you develop any symptoms? And you can, you can get sick from a cold. You can get sick from the flu, and the, and the treatment is the same. You increase the colostrum to two capsules four times a day. That would be breakfast, lunch, dinner, bedtime. And what's cool about it is the symptoms go away in about 30 minutes. Okay, and then it lasts three to three and a half hours. You hit it again, it lasts three to three and a half hours. You do that two or three days, you'll feel better. So, yes, that, that's how you would do it. John's, and the second wave is coming. John says when he goes out in the sun, he gets headaches, and uh, then he has to go to sleep. Don't go out in the sun. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, that would be the easy answer. He's young. Yeah, he's, oh, okay, get a hat. That's the first thing. Okay, get a hat. Okay, get yourself either a cowboy hat or something similar to that and see if that makes a difference. Because what may be going on here is it's it's essentially eye strain. So sunglasses and a hat, if you can go out that way with it. Yeah, glasses. Yeah, maybe that's it too. It was the last time your script was checked. Yeah. So in any event, the first thing you want to do is just to make sure that your head is protected from the heat. So again... Uh, you're, not, you're not allergic to the sunlight, but what you're probably doing is you're looking at something hitting hitting your eyesight. Yeah, probably has to do with your eyeballs. So there you go, kiddo. All right, thanks for asking your question. Let's Next see. victim. Saharan dust, any unknown facts about it? Yeah, it's, it comes from Africa. Yeah. You know, so, and it's and, and if you think it's hitting us bad, it's hitting them worse in Texas right now. Yeah, we're not really getting that Yeah, we just get a little bit of it. Yeah, and this is this is kind of an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. So good things come out of good uh, some of these places and bad things too. What, el- what other good things happen this type of year out of the Sahara? Beautiful, beautiful. Hurricanes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, beautiful, so if you watch hurricanes. the weather, okay, these little these little systems turn into hurricanes just off the west coast of Africa. So it's the same jet stream that, that brings us the dust as brings us the hurricanes. It's kind of kind of cool, actually. Davey, not a not a visor, the whole head, buddy. The yeah, whole head. the whole head. Yeah, I thought I thought I made myself clear. Little Nas hat. X, it man. Okay, little Nas X, you can handle it. Little Nas X. <laughs> hey. Yeah, whatever it takes, man. You know, 
no. The, oh, I know the chat's asleep because everybody's hanging on every word that Dr. Dave has to throw, throw out there. That's why. When they have questions, they ask, but otherwise they just sit there and listen. Robin said, you're awesome, doctor. Love everyone at your office. You have a great staff. Well, thank you, They're Robin. very caring. The check's in the mail, Robin. <laughs> yeah, right. Appreciate that. Thanks, Robin. Yeah, that was yeah, It's always good to have a plug like that. So, how are we doing? What's, I'm listening you know, after traffic. all these years, I can't get the clock right to know when, when we're going to come off the, the bottom of the hour. I know. How much longer on that? Anyone? Uh, we got about 45. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, very soon. I think, yeah, well, my right, internal so clock. You got a, I mean, this COVID testing hotline, by the way, is a really good idea. I like it because that way, no matter where you are in the state of Florida, we have, uh, we got facilities in Jacksonville, or you can take care of it here, or what have you. Yeah, right? and, more, and more interestingly, if we have doctors' offices elsewhere, we have phlebotomists that can, all over the state that can That's actually blood people, man. Yeah, they can haul the, the samples into the lab for you. I know little Nas X sucked, but I was talking about the damn hat. <laughs> Wake up to WDBO. Here we go. You can leave your hat on. on time with that guy's dead. I know. <laughs> Joe Cocker. Our Ask the Experts weekend continues on WDBO. Hey, welcome back to Stages of Life right here on WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580. Our number, if you want to join the show, 844-580-WDBO, 844-580-WDBO. We are live, and you're more than welcome to join us. And, of course, if you don't want to call in, you can always send us an open mic using the open mic feature in the app. Just go ahead and download the WDBO app, or if you already have it, open it up, and then there is an open mic feature. You can leave us a little voicemail. We'll play that live on air and get that question answered. Let's head to those phone lines now. We've got Steve leading things off here today. Steve, welcome to the show. What is your question for Dr. David Klein? Hi again. Um, a while back I called uh, and letting Dr. Klein know that I stopped uh, light um, lisinopril because of the cough it gave me. Right. And, he had, he had, Dr., you had mentioned uh, possibly switching to amlodipine. Yes. I think it's called. And I mentioned that to the doctor, and the doctor said uh, something about because of my um, uh, edema, thought the better choice would be uh, the hydrochlorothiazide, the water pill. Yeah, that's that's, that's that it's like it's yeah, that's that's kind of like kissing your wife on the cheek. It, it's it's not going to get you very much. So the diuretics will lower your blood pressure, sure enough, but they don't do very much for the edema after the first week, two or three that you're on it. So if he didn't think amlodipine was a good idea because he thought that it would cause increased leakiness of the capillaries, a better choice would have been one called clonidine, which is spelled C-L-O-N-I-D-I-N-E. Now, clonidine, when used carefully, thoughtfully, and skillfully, will bring anybody's blood pressure down, and it does it with the fewest side effects of any medication I've ever had. More so, this stuff is dirt cheap. I mean, honestly. You know, uh, the copay on this thing, if you're using your, you know, your Blue Cross, is usually more than paying cash for this stuff. This is like a $5 medication. So clonidine, the starting dose, is 0 0.1 milligrams. That's 0 0.1 twice a day. You wait about a week or 10 days, recheck the blood pressure in the doctor's office. I will not do this at home. And then I go to three times a day. And then I wait a week to 10 days. And then I go to uh, two tablets twice a day. And then you, you increase the dosage until you see the, the blood pressure start to fall off. And then I may change it to a patch. Now, the problem with the patches is they're not nearly as cheap as the pills, but it gives you much better control. So you can, in fact, get them in, in, very reasonably if you shop around. If you don't shop around, they'll hose you. But clonidine is the best choice in terms of the tablets. So if I had to pick an antihypertensive, that's a blood pressure medication, and I was on a deserted island, that would be my first choice because nobody is ever allergic to it. It doesn't cause leaky of anything, and it doesn't cause that cough that you see with the ACE inhibitors. So give, that a, give, give them a call and ask them to try the, the clonidine first. It's going to say, well, that's a very old medication. No kidding. It has been around a long time. It used to be called Catapress back in the day. Um, it used to be expensive. It's cheap, which is probably why they don't use it too much anymore. Okay, nobody takes them out to lunch to learn about it. So clonidine would be the way I would go with it. I'm glad you off you came off the, the lisinopril because oddly enough that I got that cough when I was on lisinopril. You know, and it's not a lot of laughs. But you know what's neat about it? 
okay, just in terms of philosophy, that lisinopril works on the ACE, the ACE receptors. These are the same receptors that COVID hits. So the fact that you're antihypertensive also causes a cough is kind of interesting with regards to just a, a deeper understanding or appreciation of physiology. You are tickling the same receptors that the virus needs to get into your system. Does that mean you're more susceptible? The answer is no, but just having hypertension does put you at risk. So I'm happy that you did better with that. So congratulations. Who's our Good next victim? Steve. Let's keep rolling right along. 844-580-WDBO <laughs> is the number if you want to call in. Let's go to John. He's calling in from right here in Orlando. John, welcome onto the show. What you got for that? Earth to John. Hi, sir. <laughs> uh, my question is, um, I'm 57 years old. Uh, I do not have a gallbladder that was removed. But since teenage years, I've struggled with irregularity, constipation, um, I currently walk five miles a day, drink 40 to 50 ounces of water. I've noticed if I eat junk food, I can have no problems. But if I try to eat healthy, I have problems. Okay, so, um, so, if, you, so if you eat sugar-laden foods, you poop better. Is that what we're talking about? Yes, sir. All right, okay. So which ones in particular seem to, to, to have that effect on you? This is, this is wickedly important, by the way. So what is um, it? Anything, uh, you know, I, I, I'm in a high-pressure job, so I would drink sodas. I don't drink those anymore. Um, but any of the regular foods, corn, beans, potatoes, I'll have no problems. Okay. Um, but as soon as I, I did the keto diet and I lost 20 pounds because I'm also pre-diabetic, which was great, but it was horrible going through it. Okay, here's, here's, here are your issues, okay, because there's more than one. Okay, what, what do you think it is that makes you pre-diabetic? Okay, and this, this, and then you're, you're talking about taking in corn and wondering why you, A, gained weight to begin with, and B, why your blood sugar is whacked out. And the answer is in corn, in particular, something as a sugar called fructose. In those uh, syrupy sodas you were, you were consuming, high fructose corn syrup, that fructose inhibits the insulin receptor very directly and very potently. It's poison. Okay, it will fatten cattle. The way you fatten cattle, by the way, is by giving them corn mash and soy mash. Okay, it's cattle feed. It fattens cattle 30% in six weeks. It'll fatten you too. So the fructose was actually make, was poisoning you. That's a problem. So the constipation isn't coming from the lack of, of, of uh, sugar or the lack of poison. It's coming from a lack of oil. What I'm going to recommend that you do is pull corn, pull the high fructose corn syrup directly out of your diet. It has got to go. You will again lose weight. Your blood sugar will come down. It may, we may need to do a few other things to get it back into, you know, into a healthier range, let's say. But to deal with a constipation, I want you to understand what the colon does. The colon has one function, and that one function is withdrawing water from your stool. It desiccates it. So if you're dehydrated, you'll become constipated. You're not drinking enough water. 40 to 50 ounces is only about half of what you should be taking at this time of the year in Florida. But even at that, the way you fix this is by increasing your oil consumption. So what oil are we talking about? The answer is flaxseed oil. Not flaxseed ground, but flaxseed oil. Another one is called CLA, or conjugated linoleic acid. And you use these in combination, and the reason is, is that your body doesn't absorb either of these particularly well. So it goes from the teeth down to the tail without being absorbed. It's a lubricant. It's like mayonnaise to a, to a, to a sub shop, okay? You know, it, it's glide. It allows, it allows things to move along. How much flaxseed oil do you need? The answer is two grams at bedtime. That would be two gel caps. Three sometimes, but two minimum. And the CLA, you want to be taking about 2,000 to 2,500 milligrams twice a day. Your body can't absorb it, so it passes through. And then the constipation takes care of itself. If you pull the fructose out of your diet, the diabetes will start to correct itself, and you'll lose weight. So these are two separate problems, but they're, being, uh, they're playing off against each other. And then as far as the stressful job, your job couldn't be uh, as stressful as mine, but I realized that nothing makes things more stressful than to eat poison for dinner. Okay, So you've got to eat healthy, and you're going to start feeling better, and you're going to sleep better. You sleep better, you know. You wake up, your gut's doing okay, um, but that's. What, I'd like you to try that first before you do anything goofy. So, John, does that kind of make sense? Yes. Um, I was also considering my testosterone level is low. I was sitting 
you have any thoughts on that? How low is it? On getting therapy. Um, I think the the free radical was like 184. No, it's not free radicals. Okay, so you, you may have free testosterone. I always like to work with the total testosterones. I, what I'll do is I'll take some, something called sex hormone binding globulin testosterone and estradiol, and that gives me a much better handle as to what to do. Do you know what your estrogen level is doing? Uh, I don't. Okay, you I need to know. To. Okay, so you have to know your estradiol. So your testosterone level at 184 at your age is actually too low. So you can do what I do, which is to use transdermal testosterone. You add progesterone and chrysin to it, okay? And you put it on your fo- in the inner portion of your forearms. It goes through very, very easily. So you don't need shots. You don't need um, – it's, and it's inexpensive, actually. As it turns out, the progesterone, when you add that to the cream, it's an aromatase inhibitor. So it blocks the degradation of testosterone to estradiol. The chrysin blocks the degradation to, uh, to dihydrotestosterone. But if you don't know what your estradiol level is doing, the testosterone level is immaterial because it's a ratio game. So you have to ask your doc for an estradiol level with it. So if you, were, if you came into my office, the blood work would sound a little something like this. You'd be getting a testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, S, uh, sex hormone binding globulin, insulin level. Okay, because all of those things influence the way, um, the, the, basically the, the way the intimacy issues will happen or your ability to focus or your bone density. You have to be able to look at these factors. For new patients, I'll get parathormone levels. Why? Because I'm really interested in bone density. I want to make sure that we're not dealing with parathyroid adenomas, which seem to happen fairly quickly and can be problematic for folks. So you're missing some data. But yes, you're probably a candidate for uh, testosterone replacement. So the way that I prescribe it to folks, it costs about $26 a month. Okay? So, it, you know, that pharmacy specialist guys, they advertise on the, on the, uh, for the hour. And it, they charge my patients about 80 bucks for three months. So, you know, but you have to know what you're doing. So, John, if your doc... Um, need some help with this that's great if you want to come in I'll be happy to do it for you this is not this is a very very easy problem actually so I hope I answered All your right. question good stuff there it's actually John. pretty Appreciate simple yeah. yeah. Stage of Life located 1917 Booth Circle in Longwood Florida their number 407 679 3337 our number here 844 580 WDBO one more final segment with the dot coming up 844 844- 580 WDBO. You're listening to Stages of Life. Okay, so we got some questions. What do we got? Stage 3 CKD disease. Chronic kidney disease. Please explain. Okay, so what happens, it's something called an estimated glomerular filtration rate is below 60. What this means is that it's about half of what it was when you were a youngster. So they call this stage 3 kidney disease. And so... um, or it's 60 and lower. Mm. And that's, that's really what it means. It could come from any number of different things. You want to be looking for, A, treatable causes of uh, chronic kidney disease. And the one that I find to be the most frustrating, not the most difficult to treat, but the most frustrating, is increases in serum uric acid levels. Because uric acid causes the kidney function to decrease predictably, and it can lead to gout. So even if you don't have kidney stones, even if you don't have uh, gout pain or arthropathy, it can cause something called nephropathy, which is what your, your, your chronic kidney disease is all about. So I treat it with something called allopurinol. Allopurinol is a simple, very, very inexpensive medication. About one person in three or 400 doesn't tolerate it, so it's, it's got a pretty good uh, track record that way. You lower the uric acid level, and then sometimes the, chronic, the, the, the kidney function starts to return. In terms of nutraceuticals, I use two things. I use high-dose folic acid, that's 5,000 micrograms per day, and an amino acid, oddly enough, called taurine. So taurine at 500 milligrams four times a day, and again, you'll see that the kidney function start to improve. Will it bounce back to that of a child? The answer is no, but it usually knocks it back the equivalent of five to ten years' worth of uh, uh, disease. So yeah, that's something, and it's cheap. You know, I think the folic acid is four dollars a month, and I think the taurine's ten. So you know, none of these things are, are expensive. What else we got up there? Um, you mentioned, I, you know, I take lisinopril. Yes. So you need me to get off of that? No, no, it's working fine for your blood pressure. You just need to know that. What that's, about the cough? Do you have? Are you having the cough issue? I always have a cough. Why so never I don't pay any attention? You control it better than I do. 
But I think your cough is actually coming from the from the asthma. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a little bit different. <laughs> no, the, the, no, the, the cough from lisinopril is actually a dry cough. Mm-hmm. Okay, it doesn't produce anything. Yeah, I have that too. It's an irritated cough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's, it's 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 if you want to try it, we'll take you off the take you off the lisinopril and see if we can keep your blood pressure under control and see if the cough goes away. Cheapest. All right, we could try it. Whatever you want to do. What do you think, guys? Take a vote. <laughs> take a vote. Right yeah, now. Well, we'll, yeah, we're gonna have a poll here. Yes, we are. Now, don't eat your leftovers. Sorry, I text. What? Should I wait for you or eat leftovers? Oh. That was a question. All right. You got 10 minutes. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> it fixed the flag. Oh, did you fix the flag? I should have <laughs> that in there. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Our flag's been running backwards. Did you fix the flag? It was not a political statement either. It was not. No, it was not. A, it was just simply a matter of not knowing how it goes up there. Uh-huh. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I went on board of a, a, a ship in Baltimore Harbor. You know, it was one of these things open to the public kind mm-hmm. of a deal. Sure. So there was this, this uh, uh, underwater uh, demolition something or others. You know, it's an interesting little uh, purpose-built boat. And so, I, you know, they allowed me to go on. And so I went on board there with, with my uh, former wife, actually. Oh. And so... Yeah, so it's been at least 10 years. Yes. So we went on this little thing, and it's in Baltimore Harbor. So I'm walking around, and you know, I let them know that I was a, a commander in the Navy, right? Okay, I was in my shorts and flip-flops, but mm-hmm. just the same. So they treated me very nicely. So they took us down below for coffee. And if you've ever been on, on a ship, okay, and small ones are the worst, okay, and had coffee below deck, okay, the galley stinks like anybody's business. You might as well be on a fishing boat. And so my, my wife just became violently ill. Okay, and she didn't, and she's a coffeeholic. So she, but she didn't take coffee for weeks and weeks and weeks afterwards because it just made her sick to think of it. Really? But okay, on my way off the ship, I pulled the yeoman aside and I said, "Oh, by the way, your ribbons are on backwards." Oh no! Well, that was what that was the response. She goes, "I beg to differ with you, sir. They're in, in proper order of precedence." I said, "No, they're not." So you know, you're, you're you know, and so I pointed out where the where they were in, in the wrong order. So she went and found her first shirt. Okay. You know, the, the senior uh, NCO who came over and said, well, sir, you know, the, the, what, what makes you think they're out of order? I said, I know they're out of order. Why don't you check your chart that's in your in your wardroom? Oh, Every dear. wardroom has uh, one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they came back and were very, they were surprised. Okay. But the biggest surprise when they asked me, so, okay, what do you do for, you know, in the Navy? I said, oh, I'm at medical corps. And they, that, that was like the worst thing I could have told them. Oh, that the doc mm-hmm. told him how to wear the uniform because it's yeah. almost always the other yeah, way around. An, yeah, I was going to say, usually, <laughs> usually you guys are the slackers. Oh, the slackers. Oh, man. I mean, you're, when you, you know, as a, did this hospital commander thing, it was just a, a good gig when you can get it. And you're lucky if the docs put their shoes on the right feet. Honestly, you know, you just wonder where they're coming from. They're, they're smart people, but dressing themselves, <laughs> always good for feel. So I was looking at the flag. Yeah, so the doc came on board and said, Wait, no, your flag's on you on wrong. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, any anything else up there for us? Or are we no, in good right shape? Now. Good. No, we're in good shape, actually. Well, if you're watching us on on Facebook, thank you very much. Okay, it's good. To, it's 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 fun. Oh, here we go. Oh, we're still promoting how we're not Spanish. Amazing. I'm not. Um, and I stayed in the Holiday Inn Express last night, and I still don't. I still can't speak Spanish. Final segment of Stages of Life here on WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580. We've got phone lines open, 844-580-WDBO. Go ahead, give us a call right now, 844-580-WDBO. we got time to field one more caller, but we also have one of those open mics. So, uh, Chase, producer, why don't you go ahead and play that open mic for the doc. Hey, Doc, can you expound on your treatment of vertigo caused by ear crystals with cool. a Sonicare device? I want to know if there's anything special that has to be done after you do that treatment, like sleep sitting up or avoiding sleeping on the side where the bad ear is. Good for him. Okay. Well, here's here's the deal. So there was somebody that was listening in. What he's referring to is a little treatment that we put together for people that would develop vertigo and or tinnitus from the crystals in their ear finding themselves in a stuck position. 
So you can go to the doctor and they can teach you these exercises where you turn your head this way and turn your head that way and lean over the bed and go left and right. And you do this and pretty soon you'll get tired of it and still have uh, vertigo. But what you can do is you can use an ultrasonic toothbrush. Now, Sonicare is the one that I prefer because it has four 30-second cycles attached to it. And what you do is you take the toothbrush as it is, and you get these little rubber pyramid things, these erasers that you can buy them at Staples or Office Depot. They're the kind you had when you were in school, and you shoved them over the back of your pencils. Okay, we all have the same uh, memories of these things. They, they taste terrible, but, they, but they're really good erasers. And you put that over the toothbrush bristles, and you place that over a bone called the mastoid, and it's the bone that my headsets are resting on, but you'll know it because it's the bone behind your ear. And you lay that thing on there and turn it on. Now, you better be lying down when you do this because sometimes the vertigo can get worse for a short period of time. So you sit down, you lie down, you do whatever you want to do, but you move it from side to side. So every time there's a 30-second cycle, you move it from left to right right to left, left to right. And you do this three or four times, and you do it a couple times a day. And what it does is it shakes the crystals loose. Now, what can you do to keep this from coming back? And the answer is, just don't get dehydrated again, because that's frequently what causes this. An ear infection, dehydration will lead to this. Elevations in uric acid can lead to it. So have your blood checked and see what your uric acid level is doing. You want your uric acid level to be below six point, uh, pardon me, below 5.5. You want it low. Things that will make it worse, caffeine and salt. So you want to watch your salt and caffeine uh, intake wickedly important. So Sonicare, you can get them for about 60 bucks at Costco. Uh, you can get them elsewhere if you, if you don't mind paying more. But you need to get one of those rubber uh, pyramid things to stick over the, the bristles. So I hope that answers your question because it works. It's a marvelous technique. Save you a lot of money. What else we got there? All right, Doc, we got about two Got about two minutes left. Sure uh, why don't you tell everyone what you're doing at the Stage of Life offices and the tests you've been able to administer cool. for companies and everything you were talking about to start the show. Okay, Stages Book of Life. Yeah, the Stages of Life office is located at 1917 Booth Circle, and that's in Longwood, just you know, right off of I-4. It's a piano's throw off of I-4 at 434. Where, if you know the area, we're on the other side of the street from Four Rivers. Uh, you know, the, the, the uh, barbecue joint. Marvelous food, by the way. Excellent food. We enjoyed the heck out of it yesterday. And it just marvelous. So what do we do? Okay, we do very, very comprehensive blood work on site. We do diagnostic ultrasound on site, electrodiagnostics on site. We do cognitive function assessment on site. But we also do COVID testing on site. So we can do the finger sticks. You come in. You know, if you're a patient of ours, it's, you know, it's like 50 bucks. It's very, very reasonable. We can send you out for the PCR. We just draw the sample and then send it to our lab in Jacksonville. We're doing entire offices if you schedule an appointment to come in there so I can get the staff in there to keep your people from bouncing into each other. So we do three or four different types of COVID testing depending upon what the circumstance dictates. So if you need the COVID because you're, you know, you, you're in quarantine, we'll do it. The antigen is the one that we typically like to do for people if they want to know if they're infectious or if they have to go someplace where they need very specifically to have that piece of information. So let's say you're a pilot. We had one yesterday where you know he, had, he, you know, he found himself to be COVID positive on the PCR, but he needed to have two negative studies to get out. So we brought him in. We did the antigen, which was negative. He'll do the, the next antigen study today, which is probably going to be negative, and then he goes back out and flies. So it's a it's a big deal. Some of these folks that earn um, that earn a lot or the businesses give up a lot, you know, it's very, very important that you get things done quickly. And that's what we do at Stages of Life is we get in, get it done quickly, and get you out. Because, my God, we love you, but nobody, except for docs, like to hang around doctor's offices. So Stages of Life Medical Institute, we differentiate ourselves because we actually, we give a darn. We, we're there for you. We do what we need to do. And... We kind of know what we're doing. So again, thank you very, very much. I appreciate the opportunity of speaking to you today on this holiday weekend. This is the new home of WDBO. WDBO. And that's it. That's how, that is how you land an airplane. <clears throat> and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Facebook, thanks a lot. It's been fun. But the doc is done. Later. Later. Stick a fork in him, he's done.